Welcome to the Stone Ridge video series for batch manufacturers. Our batch industry solutions are powered by Yavion ProBatch, running on Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central. This video will be focused around uh, these topics, uh, again, looking at manufacturing execution. We have other videos that look at item setup, production setup, production uh, warehouse operations, uh, those sorts of topics. So we'll be looking at um, these topics uh, today in this video. Okay, so uh, we've got item setup, item configuration, we've got manufacturing specifications, quality, um, all those uh, components have been set up. What I want to do is just take us directly to the planning worksheet. And what I want to do is actually uh, execute the planning worksheets or calculate the, the planning worksheet. We can look at our uh, production schedule as well as material requirements, and I'm just looking at a specific uh, subset of items. What the planning worksheet is going to do is it's going to net uh, supply and demand for us. So it's going to look at total demand in the system, total supply in the system, and then suggest um, production orders, uh, assembly orders, transfers, or purchases to net or uh, accommodate my uh, total demand requirements in the system. So this is looking at uh, the demand that's going to be calculated or the demand that's recognized in the system. I just want to note that there are planning parameters that are set up for items. So if we're looking at, uh, for example, uh, minimum batch sizes, if you'll notice our croissant dough is in a batch size of 650 pounds, I have a requirements for something larger than 360 or uh, 650 times three pounds. So it's going to create then three individual batches to accommodate total demand. Okay. Uh, we have the ability to order specific numbers, again, batch sizes, a lot of accumulation periods, that sort of uh, calculation is available to us. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually carry out um, the action message on these uh, four production orders so that we can look at some manufacturing uh, concepts. The other thing to look at here is the ability to merge these as well. So if I wanted to actually run one batch instead of uh, multiples, uh, I could do that too. Okay, so let's come in and carry out uh, the action messages, and I'm going to create these just as firm planned orders. This would allow us to create the assembly orders, the uh, purchase orders, etc., cetera, um, in the system. So this is going to create those documents that needed for uh, my shop floor execution. Okay, let's look at uh, a production order, release production order, um, and I want to talk about some feature functionality here, and I'm actually going to pull up some Chipotle sauce, and we're going to look at this uh, throughout the manufacturing execution at this point. So I've created a production order. Um, on the production order itself, I have the ability to look at the routing and the components that are on this production order. I could make changes or adjustments, substitute items, etc., if I needed to. But what I want to focus on here is actually printing a production order so that you can see uh, the type of output that we have available to us. So this would be something like a job ticket, uh, et cetera, that's going to go to the shop floor. It's going to have my production information on it, but it, more importantly, it's going to have barcodes that set us up for um, scanning capabilities that we're going to look at in a little bit. So out of the box, um, again, the, the barcodes exist in the system for, uh, oops, for data capture and for uh, scanning in the system. I do have the ability to put printed work instructions on here if I want to. You'll notice that our operations are also set up with uh, barcode scanning so we can capture this data. Okay. Um, look a little bit at the visual scheduling options here. So this is one option for a, vis a visual scheduler. I'm just going to open this up so that we can look at what uh, is currently on our production floor. This would allow me to look at subsets of machine centers, work centers. I could look at um, different dates. Uh, I can look at planned, firm planned, release production orders, etc. But what you can see is that in my mixing department, I have um, now those three levels of croissants. I've got some dough that's being made, etc. We do have the capability then for um, drag and drop to reschedule, to change the schedule, to move a particular production order around on the shop floor. Maybe it's going to run in a different work center, different machine center, etc. So some visual scheduling capabilities um, that can be provided in the system. Okay, so um, knowing that I printed that uh, production order, what I want to do is uh, pull up uh, the scanning app. And this is really an emulator. Um, so, you know, this can run on any device that's running a browser, but I'm going to log into the application. Uh, these other icons deal with warehouse operations, so you can uh, get more information about those um, in other videos. But what I want to do is really talk about the uh, production capabilities here. So I really have three 
options here to look at. So I've got consumption, output, and confirmation. So let's look at uh, confirmation first. So what confirmation allows me to do, and, and you're going to have to trust me, I'm running a handheld scanner over here with my production order output. This actually allows me then to um, scan a particular um, operation um, that's on my ticket so that I can select what operation am I running. Um, so this happens to be that step one of my Chipotle mix. An action code then is scanned to say, am I starting the operation? Do I want to record total time that's elapsed? Do I want to record setup time, et cetera? So this is allowing me to capture that time. In essence, I'm clocking in and, and clocking off uh, a particular step on a production order. Okay. Other things that I can do here is I can record consumption. So once again, the ability to scan a particular production line, um, this now allows me to scan the, the item lot barcode that would be on the product, on the tote, et cetera, or um, um, whatever I'm consuming essentially into the production process. So um, that would be a part of the production order um, on the manufacturing specification, but then again, the label would be on the package itself. You can record um, the quantity that I'm consuming, uh, et cetera, onto the product. And really output is a, a very similar uh, concept. I'm gonna record the production order itself uh, to know what, uh, what production order am I completing. Package is gonna allow me to, uh, if I need to do package tracking and or load carrier, this could prompt me then for uh, that information. I'm gonna be recording a, a lot number and my system actually pre-assigned a lot number, although it could be prompted to uh, capture that information as well. So recording output can be done um, off the scanner. Other operations, um, you know, picking that sort of thing can certainly be done here. So, um, you know, we've got that functionality available. Okay, so for some uh, organizations, uh, you need the ability to actually use a scale to weigh out product. So we actually have uh, a scale integration as well. So we have the concept of a weighing order. And what the weighing order is going to allow us to do is in the uh, or actually on the raw material itself, we can designate that the that the raw material is dispensed using a scale. Um, so this allows us then to weigh um, the product using an integrated scale to record the quantity that I'm actually consuming. So um, that is uh, available in the system. We also have the ability to do provisional picking. Um, what that would allow us to do is, for example, move an entire tote to the manufacturing area, dispense or, or um, yeah, dispense the product that I would need out of that tote or barrel package, that sort of thing, and then put it back. So it's a sort of a provisional pick and then a, a put away function um, of the entire uh, package or the entire container. Um, so that would help uh, facilitate those sorts of processes. The other uh, item uh, or uh, functionality that is sometimes needed with uh, batch manufacturing is uh, really the ability to do um, filling or dispensing of the product. So in this little example here, I'm just going to highlight my configuration. I've got a, a product that I'm making in bulk, and then I actually have two package sizes that this specific product can be in. What the system allows us to do is to create a base formula, in this case, my bulk product. So I have a recipe for the bulk product, manufacture the product in bulk, and then I can either dispense as a secondary um, production function into the containers that I want. So if I'm making a bulk product and I'm going to dispense it into the 750 and the 1.75 liter containers, um, or I can actually store the bulk and then do uh, what we call a, a decanting order, which would essentially fill the container sizes as needed to fulfill sales order demand. So again, two sort of concepts here, create in bulk, dispense within that production process or dispense as needed. The key thing here is that these items are tied together um, so that the relationship is understood between the bulk item and the filling items. And then I have a consistent recipe um, that is available as well. So I'm not uh, maintaining a recipe for all three products. I'm maintaining that consistent recipe for one and then using it uh, with the other products. All right. So, uh, Thank you for joining us today. Again, a lot of other videos around the manufacturing area. Please follow us on LinkedIn to see uh, more information about webinars, events. Check out our resources page. Uh, find more information about uh, educational content, et cetera. And then if you have any questions, uh, want to follow up really with anything, feel free to reach out to us, solutions at stonebridgestoffware.com, and we will connect you with the appropriate person.